Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. I've been talking on and off about some of the new features in After Effects CS3, and today I'm going to talk about another one called Vanishing Point. Well, technically, Vanishing Point is a feature in Photoshop CS3 that After Effects can exploit, and I'll show you what I mean. So here I am in Photoshop with a picture of a Creative Cow Master Series DVD. Now, I know that for the past few tutorials, I may have had a thing going where I was shamelessly promoting my new DVD, Internet Killed the Video Star, a guide to creating video for the web. But I'm not going to do that here. I I'm not even going to mention it here, um, I guess from this point forward. You see, this is a picture of Serge Hamad's soon-to-be-released training for Zaxworks 3D Invigorator plugins for After Effects, which you will soon be able to find at training.creativecow.net. Uh, the fact that my DVD is currently available there is just a coincidence. <clears throat> but moving on. Now, I want to use this image in a commercial that I'm working on for the Creative Cow Master Series, but that commercial will be using After Effects 3D with some camera rotation. And once I rotate around the flat image of the DVD, the illusion of 3D will of course be lost. It would quickly become obvious that this is a flat image, not an actual 3D object. It looks like the only way to do this sort of thing would be to animate the commercial, at least partially, in a 3D program like Cinema 4D. But stepping outside of After Effects to work in 3D while often necessary means more time added into the project, especially as you make changes to camera angles and animation. Now fortunately, in this case, we have another solution. Using Photoshop's Vanishing Point tool, we can turn this two-dimensional image of a DVD into a 3D model that After Effects can use. Well, gosh, doesn't that sound just nifty? Golly! Let's get to it. In Photoshop, I'll choose Filter, Vanishing Point. This opens a Vanishing Point window. Next, I'll click on the Create Plane tool and then I'll click on the four corners of the front of this DVD to create the first 2D plane. Now, don't worry about it being perfect. We'll be able to adjust it in a moment. When you add your fourth corner, you'll notice that the plane is fully created. Once that's done, you'll want to make sure that your corners are lined up properly. You can just grab hold of them with the mouse and move them until you're happy. But you want to do this now because after we add in the rest of the planes, this will be a lot more difficult, if not impossible. Okay, once you're done adjusting, we'll need to add another 2D plane for the DVD spine. So click on the Create Plane tool again, and then mouse over one of the plane's bounding box points. You'll see this grid icon up here telling us that we can build a new plane off of the old one. Now drag it out, and as you can see, it creates another 2D plane. Great. If you want to make adjustments as I showed you before, you can, but depending on what you do, it may affect the original plane. Anyway, let's do this one more time for the top of the DVD. Choose the Create Plane tool, and then drag out the final 2D plane. Okay, not bad. Let's get this bad boy over to After Effects. Click on this little arrow flyout button up here, which brings up a bunch of commands, one of which is Export to After Effects CS3. So, once I've chosen that, and I'm in the Export VPE dialog, I'll navigate to the directory that I want to save this in, and then I'll set the name of the file to, let's see, serge.vpe, and then I'll click Save. Okay, next, I'll jump over to After Effects, and we'll import our 3D object. Okay, here's the thing. I'd like to say that this process is perfect, but, well, it's not. Depending on how you set things up in Photoshop, when you import it into After Effects, there are issues. Let me just show you what I mean. To import the Vanishing Point 3D object, choose File, Import, Vanishing Point. Then, navigate to your Vanishing Point file, which will probably have the suffix VPE, and then click OK. Now, once you've imported the VPE into After Effects, a new composition is created here in the Project Panel. Now, you can double-click to open the composition, and once inside, you can see that the object is made up of several 3D layers. The problem is that these layers are not usually set up in the most ideal way. Now, this isn't always the case, but to put it very technically, the coordinates and rotation of these layers are often all screwy. Just navigating around them with the camera shows you how messed up things truly are, and trying to set them right so that they are useful for animation is difficult 
because of this and often makes things a lot worse. Now, I'm not going to waste time showing you that, but feel free to try it yourself. A. But you know me, I'm not that kind of guy. I wouldn't leave you hanging here without any kind of solution. I found a few things that help this sort of issue, and I'm going to share them now. For starters, skip opening the imported composition. You've got at least four layers in there to contend with, so let's make it much simpler by trying something a little different. Take the vanishing point composition and drop it into a new or already existing composition. In this case, I'm dropping it into a composition that already has a 3D camera in there. Next, make the vanishing point composition a 3D layer by activating the 3D layer switch and then also collapse transformations on the layer as well using the collapse transformation switch. Now I've covered this in more detail in previous tutorials such as my 3D bird flock tutorial and my Z-Space tutorial. But the short of it is that doing this gives the layer 3D coordinates while at the same time preserving the 3D aspects of the nested composition as well. Now here's where things are a little rough. We need to rotate this vanishing point precomposition so that it's sitting properly in 3D space. Right now it's on some very weird angles and requires some adjustment. This will be best accomplished using one of the orthographic views such as the top, left, right and other non-perspective views. So in other words, don't use the active camera or custom views. Perhaps I'll cover the orthographic versus perspective views in another podcast, but for now, trust me when I say that for placement purposes, you are much better off using an orthographic view. So I'll set the camera view to top, and once in there, we're looking straight down at the composition from the top, but clearly we aren't seeing the top of our 3D object, the DVD case. It's pretty messed up. Unfortunately, because of the weird setup of the 3D layers in the original composition, if we select the 3D object, we can see that the axis arrows are not aligned properly. Not much we can do about that just yet, but what we can do is use the rotation tool to try and get it at least set up so that when we look down on the object, we are seeing only the top. This may take a little work, but once you get it to this point, you're in a pretty good place. The next thing to do is to add a null object to the composition. So choose Layer, New, Null Object. Then make the null object a 3D layer by using its 3D layer switch in the timeline. Now use the rotation tool to align the null object with the 3D object. In this case, rotating it on its Y axis should do the trick. Once that's done, Make the vanishing point layer, that's our 3D object, a child of the null by using the parenting pick whip. Then with the null selected, hit R to reveal the rotation property for the null object. Then in the timeline, you'll see that the only rotation property that is not set to zero is the Y orientation. So set that to zero. That should get this set up pretty well but you may still need to use the null to make some slight adjustments to rotation or position. Anyway, once that's done, go back to the active camera view. Here, I'll play around with my camera view a bit, possibly even connecting the camera's point of interest to the null object using an expression as I covered in a previous tutorial on working with null objects. And when I'm done, as you can see, if I use the camera to rotate, the 2D image from Photoshop has been turned into a 3D object in After Effects. Of course, the whole thing falls apart when you rotate too far around it, so it isn't exactly perfect, but it's better than having to go into a 3D program if you can avoid it. Now, jumping back to Photoshop for a moment, I want to show you a possible solution for all of this madness. It's madness, I tell you, madness. Yeah, it doesn't always work, but if it does, it'll save you from some of the problems that we've encountered. Since in a case like this, Vanishing Point is trying to create several 2D flat planes, none of which are head-on, perspective gets all kind of wonky. It's a good word for you there. But I found that if we add an extra grid in here, one that is entirely made of right angles, Vanishing Point sets everything up a little bit better. So I'll just select the Create Plane tool, and from there, I'll add a brand spanking new squarish or rectangularish plane. Again, make sure that everything is at a right angle or this won't work-ish. Hmm. Anyway, when done, just export as we did before. Then, 
In After Effects, import the Vanishing Point project as we did before, but this time you'll get a warning about multiple cameras. Great, Scott! Something is not right here! Ah, you can just ignore it. After Effects is a little upset because we set up a plane that wasn't connected to our original 2D plane. And just click OK. After Effects doesn't always know what's best for us, although it does remind me to wear a sweater when I go out and it's cold and it does tuck me in at night, which is really nice. Oh, you have to have the really extra special version of CS3 for those features, though, just so you know. Once imported, again, drop the vanishing point composition into a new or already existing comp, as we did before, and then make the pre-composition a 3D layer with collapse transformations turned on as well. If you move into the top orthographic view, you'll see that we're already in a much better place. We don't even need to add the null object to work with the 3D object. The axes are aligned well enough that you can just do your rotations without the help of a null, and things will go quite smoothly. Well, sometimes anyway. You can use the other orthographic views, such as the front view, to align things properly. Using multiple views is often very helpful in this process. Now, I'd also suggest in this case that you go into the vanishing point pre-composition and delete the extra 3D layer that was created in Photoshop with our fix. I've seen this extra overlapping layer cause some odd rendering artifacts, and since it doesn't do anything to help us at this point, just pretend it's like, you know, your appendix or your tonsils. Just get rid of it and then go eat some ice cream. Okay, with a little tweaking and maybe a little of Andrew Kramer's 3D reflection effect here, you can get something that looks pretty good. Obviously, this effect has a lot of applications, such as creating 3D perspectives from images of buildings or streets or even rooms. All right, that's it. Vanishing point in After Effects. Speaking of which, I've got to vanish so I can get some work done. Oh, before I do, I just want to mention that there's a commercial right after this tutorial for a new Creative Cow Master Series DVD by Walter Biscardi Jr. on using Apple Color, the color correction tool that comes with Final Cut Studio. If you've watched Good Eats on the Food Network, then you have definitely seen Walter's excellent work. Anyway, watch the commercial. It's pretty funny. See you next time. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Hi, folks. Walt Biscardi here. Are you scared of color? Are you afraid of the interface? Do the wheels make you nervous? Do you get clammy, heart palpitations, all that nasty stuff? Well, fear no more. Stop staring. Start grading with color. Almost two hours of lesson dedicated to teaching you the interface. Primary in-room, secondaries, primary out, motion tracking, vignettes, masking, keying. It's all there waiting for you. Stop staring. Start grading with color. Coming soon from Creative Cow.